In this video, we're going to be sharing our five top tips to improve your workflow in LumaFusion. So we're out here shooting on location once again, and the client is a company that's local to this area. And they've asked us to put something together that conveys their connection to this landscape and this territory. So for the last couple of days, we've put the drone in the air, we've been taking some great aerial shots. George has been doing some stunning wildlife pictures in the area. And I'm about to hike up to the top of that hill. And hopefully when we get to the top, there'll be some great scenery and I'll be able to do some really good landscape stuff. And since we've been using LumaFusion, we've been doing a lot more editing on location. So I thought this would be a great opportunity to share our five top tips to improve your productivity in LumaFusion. Okay, let's hike up that hill. Okay, tip number one, indexing. This is really important if, like me, you're terribly disorganized. By default, LumaFusion sorts your project files alphabetically. So it's a really good idea to use a naming scheme that takes advantage of this. For example, for all our professional work, we use a naming scheme where we have the client name first, followed by the project, followed by the date. For videos for your YouTube channel, you could put the channel name, followed by the subject, followed by the date. This will make it a lot easier to find what you want quicker. Another really useful feature in LumaFusion is to use the colour tags for indexing. This is particularly useful if you sync it up with the same colour tagging scheme on your Mac. So for example, the scheme we use is green is a project that's been green lighted. So this is one that the client's approved, it's gone out, it's been invoiced, that job's finished. If it's a YouTube video, that means that it's live, it's been published on the channel. Red is for a project that's finished, but it hasn't been approved yet. Or if it's for YouTube, it hasn't been published yet. Amber is a work in progress and so on. Using a naming scheme in conjunction with color tagging is a really, really helpful way to cut down on a lot of time when you're looking for a project. Okay, tip number two, get used to using that undo function. This may sound really obvious, but it's a great way to avert a potential disaster. If you're making color adjustments or applying LUTs to a clip, it's really easy to lose your way and forget where you're up to, especially when things start stacking up. So getting used to using that undo function is a great way to keep track of things. Each time you try out a different adjustment, get used to going to the top of the screen and hitting that undo feature. Using the undo feature is a great habit to get into and it can help you to avert a potential disaster. Tip number three, selecting multiple clips on the timeline. Now, when I speak to other LumaFusion users, I'm always surprised at how few people know about this. Let's say you're working on a timeline and you've edited your main track and you've cut it up into lots of little clips, but you wanna move a whole section together. It's easy to make a mistake moving each of those small clips one at a time. If you go to the bottom of the screen and highlight that little check symbol, you can then draw around a number of clips and move them all together in sequence. Once you've made your adjustments, remember to go down to the bottom of the screen and tap that little checkbox again so that it's not highlighted. Okay, tip number four, and you'll notice I'm getting more out of breath the further up this hill we go. Tip number four is about linking and delinking tracks in the timeline. Now let's say you've got a main track and you've got some B-roll clips above it in the timeline. By default, LumaFusion links those clips to the track below. You can tell when they're linked because you'll notice this little white bar at the beginning of the B-roll clip. And if we go over to the left of the screen, you'll see this little chain symbol. Now, when the chain symbol is unbroken, when you slice or delete the main track below the B-roll, the B-roll track will stay in place and move along with it. 
but what happens if you want to delete a section from underneath that b-roll clip or you want to move the b-roll without affecting the main clip but what you do in that case is move over to that little chain icon and click it and you'll notice that it breaks this means you've delinked that b-roll track from your main track now you can slice move and delete the two tracks independently once you've moved everything to where you want it to be go back to the chain icon click it so that it's unbroken again and then your b-roll track is relinked onto that main track okay tip number five we finally made it to the top of the hill look at this view that is where we just walked from where those cars are down there that's where we just came from so tip number five is about creating your own presets and saving them to favorites this is a really great time saving technique and it's also a good way to stamp your signature look across all your projects in doing this kind of work you'll notice that you tend to do a lot of the same kind of jobs if, for example, you do a lot of weddings, you'll notice you'll be shooting at the same time of day in a lot of the same locations, and the client will have the same requirements. So when you're doing things like color grading or color correction, creating your own preset and then saving it to your favorites can save you a lot of time when you start your next project. So when you've made your adjustments, you go up to the top right of the screen, save your preset, give it a name, and then save it to your favorites. So what this will do is, it'll put you five or six steps ahead when you start a new project. Faster turnaround time means a happier client, a happier client means more referrals. Okay, and that's it for now. If you have any questions at all, ask me in the comments. Thanks so much for watching. See you next time.